Hello and welcome back to Compiler Programming. Today I want to work on the module system so that we can uh, start creating some libraries and uh, have a reusable functionality that can be used in tests and maybe uh, soonish in some more or less real code that we can write with uh, this language. Um, well, if we want to have a module system, we probably do want to have some kind of a module object uh, or struct. Uh, let's see what we will need to have in that struct. I guess the very basic thing that we want is to... So we have this thing called source file somewhere. Source file. Yeah. So maybe actually we are gonna get rid of that and instead every uh, like whenever we're using source file we're actually going to be using modules and module is going to be basically exactly the same thing except that it will also have um, actually let, let's not turn it into a module but uh, module will definitely have a source file so let's say we have a module um, module will have our source file, source file, and besides the source file, a module should probably also have a scope that we can do stuff with. Yeah, that seems uh, pretty reasonable. Uh, apart from the scope, the module should also have um, maybe a list of experts that it does. I'm not, I, I think at some point we will also need to track the imports that the module has, but for now I'm just gonna ignore that stuff. So uh, we are going to say that uh, you have, hmm, do I just want to to mark something as exported inside the scope instead rather than um, hmm maybe maybe we are gonna say that this is a expert scope that might work that might work Okay, so that is a module and we need to figure out where we are going to stick that module. Uh, I guess one place to put it would be uh, inside of our uh, compilation context. So right now, uh, compilation context has this scope and but that is basically current scope uh, in the execution so if we have a function like this right at the top level this would be the top level scope and then it will be this scope here and so on and so forth so that's not exactly what we mean and uh, compilation context actually also sort of like it changes as the compilation progresses so it's not really what we want to have hmm. that is an interesting question where should i show it well right now i guess we will just do um this maybe and then we will see how that will work out So obviously just by itself that does exactly nothing. Um, but we have a function here that is uh, uh, program parse. And here we, instead of a file, we will basically provide it uh, a root module. Root module. And that seems uh, reasonable to me. Um, 
This might cause problems because we use program parse right now in a couple of places where we uh, work with it as if it was a C program. So program parse or import. There is, so there is program import file. Is it the same thing though? Um, program import file, okay. So yeah, yeah, so that actually does uh, program parse. And the issue then would be that we will not end up in the same, in the same scope, which is kind of what we want to do. Mm, that is going to be interesting. Okay, well, that's, that's fine. Let's just sort of plow forward and then we figure out once we get there, what we are going to do about that. Program parse, it accepts a root module. It should, I mean, in a sense, uh, root module should already be part of the context, I guess. So we can just say that it accepts and just the context and file source range. Yeah, that would then be on the outside, I guess. Okay. And it wants a file, so we'll say context module file. File is not a member of the module. Yes, it's called source file. Okay, I put it there by value. And actually that kind of makes sense. Uh, we don't really need to be a separate pointer. Okay, so we are left with uh, this stuff that is not happy. Uh, do we have a program parse? No. Okay, so this stuff needs to go away and this will happen in the color instead of uh, the, instead of that function. So this is where we create the source file. Uh, we do all of this stuff. Okay, I mean, we have the text, so we should just use it, to be honest. Yeah, for some reason, ah, okay, I've oh, got you. We, we add it here, but file source range. Oh no, this, uh, this source range is the source range that we, source file, source file, source file. Uh, what is in here there? Source file, file, line ranges. So this is not, Wait a second. Uh huh. No, that actually was it totally made sense that it was there. I shouldn't have moved it from that function because this is about parsing and it's, yeah. It totally makes sense that this is here. We can just do this and do this. Okay. Oops. Great. From a star, we don't need to do ampersand. Fine. So that takes care of this function. Now we are just going to pass context and we expect that uh, context has a module. Okay. 
So what about here? We are calling program parse on the file. So the only thing that we need to do is we need to say um, module star module is uh, context allocator allocator allocate module and module is module we need to put the file in here and we also need to put this um, expert scope in here and this is quite interesting how are we are going to handle the main so the, the trouble right now is in a couple of places in the compiler we need to find the main function so that we can actually know what is where is the entry point for uh, the user's program like if i show for example uh oh, no no i don't want to look I just want to do this. So basically right now we are looking for this stuff. We're looking for main entry and uh, that main entry is uh, right now it's just all in a global scope. So it's basically the same as C again, where uh, you just have one uh, giant scope and you stuff everything in there and uh, that's how it works. But I want to be able to have per module scopes and then explicit experts from the module. And that is not something that is currently working. So, um, well, right now we are just gonna say context scope and that should allow us to move forward. But um, let's see how this will turn out okay source file to constructor oh, what is const char i'm a bit not sure i get what's your problem File is a source file here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what the problem is. Problem is this needs to go in here, and uh, then we don't need to allocate the file, and we can take this stuff and shove it in here, and then we would say uh, module file text. And here is like this. Yep, maybe that makes sense. Module file text, you would need to do this and you actually not module file, you are module source file. Okay, that it does it I think for this file. Uh, what is going on here? Here we are doing program parse and we are expecting a file. Well, let's do the main version of this, which is probably slightly easier. Um, now this is going to be test module, test module, and we can create something like test init module and this will accept const car star source and what it will do is it will say that test module is module source file is this stuff and 
we also need to have a scope and we will do the same thing where we say we'll export scope is um, context scope so i guess we want to pass context in here maybe i can just move out this context into a global scope and then stop passing it around okay so that would mean now that we can do test init module of source and program parse no longer accepts this okay and we can also get rid of this i guess Uh, it, that will be a larger refactoring, but so let's keep it for now. Okay. We can get rid of this stuff. Uh, from slice to const car. Um, Slice source. Well, hmm. how do we do to this? I guess I can do slice source. Okay, that is better. Test init module. Source. Okay, so I think everything should still work exactly as it did because uh, we are faking the scope like we are still uh, as you can see here we still just have one scope shared across all the uh, imported modules so there is no namespacing for now um, but this would be a good first step uh, except we don't have a module here that is interesting let's open up the debugger and try to see why don't we have it there so program parse scope well i actually have i created that thing but i never yeah, yeah. compilation context need uh, test context but we never actually put the module in there so we need to say test context module is test module or we can put it in here did i do it in the source though I did not as well. So context module is a module. Well, let's try it that way. And we are working. So let's come in this stuff. Um, which video are we on? I did quite a lot of things in between, so that would be a bit of a long scroll, but it's fine. We are on episode 144. Okay. So, episode 144. Uh, 
introduce and module struct. Okay. So now we have a module struct. And the next thing I guess would be uh, to start looking up things in that struct rather than in the context top level scope. And we can do it in the tests. So check my result, uh, need values function, uh, JIT. What does values function do again? Okay. Um, yeah, scope lookup force. So this is where things start to get interesting. Now we are going to say test context um, expert scope. It's not, yeah, yeah, that is, should be module expert scope. I made all the possible mistakes with dot and arrow in this case. Okay, it still should be exactly the same because again, uh, they are just uh, aliases of each other and there is actually no difference which one we will use, but it does make a difference uh, for for the way we deal with the rest of the program. So now we're going to go to mass C and we also will have here where we look up main, right? And instead of main, we should now be able to look up it inside of main module. So we'll say context module expert scope okay and basically the same thing also needs to happen in here i think main uh, how do you decide what is main uh, so there is function in code Ah, you actually don't care about that stuff. You are only interested in, yeah, okay. If you come across a function that is actually the entry point function, then you do stuff. Okay, okay. And that sort of makes sense. So again, that should still be all just fine. And I think the next step, let's commit this separately as well, because the next step is going to be a bit more tricky. Uh, use top level module scope for looking up um, main and test functions. Okay, now we are going to create a new scope when we do this stuff. And this is where things will get a bit more interesting. Scope. So there is context scope. I think I removed the global scope from the program now. But let's just do scope make context allocator context scope. Technically, context scope now can even be zero. That would still be uh, perfectly fine. Uh, and everything should still work as expected. But it right now we will have a failed, a couple of failed tests, I think, because Importing prelude will now do the wrong thing, no? No, 
let me think about uh, what why does it still work I guess it still works because we are not using it here wait so we have program import file okay this just actually runs a single program so that's not problematic this is also not problematic and this one should interesting I would expect this to be broken what if I don't infer this stuff So that explodes. That explodes because it wants a while. And it wants while. Uh -huh. I get what's going on. I mean, we do create this scope here, but we don't actually use it anywhere at all and that is not great so what we need to do is we need to create a nested compilation context here context uh, import context is context okay then we would do it like this and now in that import context scope will be module expert scope um, Expert code now becomes a pretty bad name, so maybe, maybe it should just be uh, scope. Because I think it might be better if we just mark the expert somehow in the with a flag or something in the scope rather than do this thing. So let's change this while it's not used in too many places anyway. And uh, we can make that happen. Okay, and yeah, there is one last one here, I guess. Okay, now we should be broken. Okay. So that actually does make sense. It kind of is bad that we are crashing, but uh, that's something we can figure out later, I guess. Uh, for now, the, the thing is, uh, again, it is dying in here because while loop now is defined, um, It's defined in that file and it's not exported and it's not imported. And uh, you also don't have a good story right now on how the syntax things are supposed to work between modules. Like do all syntax things actually are like really global? I don't know. Like I'm not entirely sure again how this is supposed to be working. So we need to figure out a hack. And I think a hack will be that uh, we would have two functions. One that will be proper import that actually does not expose the, the inside scope to the outside and the one that does. We could also 
or we should also eventually do uh, a way to bring up sort of everything in the uh, imported scope into the scope of the file, I think, because that just is convenient for a few cases like this. Uh, but um, that is also something that will require quite a bit of work, so I will not do it right now. So let's say we have program in line uh, import file. Um, yeah, so what would that look like? It is all the same stuff, except it basically uh, doesn't create a new scope. Okay. So we are not doing any of that. And we are Yeah, so basically the difference is it doesn't create a new scope for the module. So hmm. well let's do it like that. Type dev type dev in um program import flags and we would say none is zero and here we would say inline and we would say that here we would get the flags flags and we would create a scope here, scope star, um, module scope is uh, flags, flags inline. If that is the case, and we just take the context scope, otherwise we will create a new scope. Okay, there is a bunch of program imports that we now will need to update with uh, the the flags in Fizzbuzz. We actually do need inline, and here we uh, also need inline. But now we need to say test init module of oof. No, actually we don't. It will it will still need the module, it's just we'll use the same index. Yeah, that should be fine the way it is. Uh, you here, you are none, and you here, you are none. Okay, there is import file. And this is where we were, what we were trying to fix. Actually, you're now just this. Okay. Um, yeah, we still have a couple. That is here. So. Again, this needs to be in line because uh, Prelude should be in the right scope. Okay, so things are more or less fine, but not exactly.
that's our spec hardware exception so we are importing here uh with a nan yeah that is makes sense because that should be a uh, module scope not the test context scope um Okay, here's the deal. We need to split this. We need to split this in a couple of functions. So let's uh, think about how that's going to work. I think we need something like program import uh, module and that will accept a module star module and it will do this jazz here. And then the second function that we want is uh, program uh, module from file. From file. And that will do the rest of this previous setup. And I think that should actually allow us to better control what we want to do even without the flags that I tried to introduce, but I don't think they actually did uh, what I wanted. So yeah. Now we should be better. Scope. Do I want to provide this explicit scope? I think I do. Or maybe I don't. That's an interesting question. I think I do. I think I do. Okay. Uh, program absolute pass. File pass is not defined. Uh, that's fine. You don't need to get the module. You need to get the path okay and here we will just say return module so obviously that mean, means that here we will do module star okay uh, you have uh, this thing uh, what we will do is we will say uh, context errors printf context unable to open file uh, pre slice uh, file path slice to const car um, slice expand printf this is what I need, I think. From S32. Am I using it somehow wrong? Oh, I need uh, I need a source range. Right. So maybe let's actually put the source range on the module as well. This is going to be convenient anyway, so why not? And source range is just something that basically says uh, from which byte to which byte is, um, whenever we want to report an error, this gives us the byte range inside the file that tells uh, 
where that error actually is. And now that we can do this, uh, that means that we no longer need to do it here. And we can just say module or uh, context module. module and will be source range that probably is better than what we had before because this is about text this is not about the rest of this stuff and here i need to say if not buffer And we can put source range. And this can go up. And I think I will split this into one more function that will accept a slice and then deal with uh, Yeah, so we'll do program module uh, make, or actually init, we'll get module star. And what we'll do is it will do uh, this jazz. Module is this thing. And it then it means it needs to have sliced file pass and slice uh, text. So we would say module uh, call it program yeah program module init and it would have module it would have file path and it would have the text of the thing. Now we should not be doing this here. Right. And that looks decent. I might even not need this function, to be honest. Uh, what does program parse do again? Yeah, it tokenizes and then it does uh, token parse. Well, it's fine. Let's leave it as it is. Uh, this is no longer required then. And now we can go back and start figuring out what, uh, what we need to do here. So source file. Yeah, we actually need to give it this source file, not the file pass or text. Now, kind of, this thing ends up being self-referential, which is not not great to be honest, but it's also not the worst. So module uh, source range is um module source file OK. 
do not convert. Okay. So now we can say that we have uh, This is very awkward here because we are trying to make an error but we don't have we don't truly really have a source range. So I'll just do this, I guess. Not the best. Cannot convert from const source range to source file. So here it's just scope. But what is this stuff about? I thought that context printf. Oh, okay. Uh, it actually wants it by value which is fine. Yeah, maybe it was a bit too, too premature to split this up, but um, the reason I wanted to do this is because in here, right, we have that uh, test init module and now we can actually do stuff about this. So we can say that uh, this would be test module and it will get the test file name and it will get the source and it will get the scope, which right now is a test context scope. Okay. So maybe well, let's let's leave it as a function. Who else wants to do about this? Yeah. So you are now import file, and this is where we need to split this into multiple statements now. Uh, so uh, that would be module star. Well actually 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 we can do this i guess uh, module star module is program uh, program module from file Uh, test context and we need the file right so this is this would be the file and then we have a result where we say program import module and module. Does that work? Yes. And we need scope in here. Yeah. And if you want to control the scope, so if we want to introduce a new one, we will just create it when we pass it in here, I guess. Let's continue. Fixing up the tests. Okay. And, and here. And here. Okay, and okay. Actually here we sort of do twice. Now we say prelude 
module it goes into this scope and uh, we could actually create a module scope here that is going to be separate but okay let, let's uh, put it off for now I will comment this out, but I will mark it and then I will come back to this, this thing. Basically, we can now create easily a scope that will be shared between two modules, which is sort of uh, the reason why I wanted to do this change that I'm doing now. And that will be Fizzbus module uh, fixtures Fizzbus. Actually, I can already do this like so. Great. Okay. And result is program import module test context module. Here you will get Purdue module, and here you will get the Fizzbot module. Cannot convert from int to mass result. That's because you want this file. Okay. A couple more, and we are done. Hopefully, with this part. Of the setup. Yeah. Oh, missed one. Import module prelude module. Wait, that's not right. And it should be this one. Result and reference check result tag is mass result tag success. Okay, and now we need to do this for the binary as well, but it is pretty straightforward now. We are basically going to be doing exactly the same thing. I can probably even steal it from here uh, where we would say module scope yeah this is what we need to be doing so let's do that maybe I should extract it into some functionality but for now I will not do that uh, module scope and say program import module okay from scope star to module Okay, prelude module, fine. And now we would have uh, like root module. Mm, 
Mm, that should be file path here. Something like that. Okay, we are finally building again, but I probably missed something, so let's see how we are faring right now. We do not have a module. Why don't we have a module? Because I didn't assign one, right? Um, in here, I need to say uh, test context module is test module, I think, something like that. Okay, we're getting somewhere, not very far, we are. Where are we crashing right now? We are crashing because we are not assigning the module. Yeah. So maybe program parse. So I guess here it shouldn't be actually program parse. Here should be something else. Although actually this is not the one I'm even using. Uh, import module. Well, this does set the module correctly. So wait again. Where are we crashing exactly? We are crashing because uh, test context does not have a module, right? Or not? So locals test context. Okay, test control, test context module scope, yeah. Okay, that is indeed incorrect. That was premature change from the last time. And here, because now we can do this. Now we know exactly which module we are dealing with, so we can look up in the right scope. And then that also means that here we do know in which module we need to look up. Instead of context module, we can do directly root module. This is where we are looking for our main. Let's try again, and here we go. Okay. Uh, how do we call this? We, I guess, say that a split module uh, initialization and import. Okay. Now we are ready for separate scopes, I hope. And we can start uh, with, with this one actually, because it doesn't import stuff, right? So that means that here we should be able to say scope make uh, uh, test context allocator and test context scope. So hopefully that will still work, but we will not be in the same context as everybody else. Yes, that seems perfect. Okay, um, let's try to also do the other one, module scope. Yeah, this one where we still would like to create a new scope, even if it, even though it is right now shared between uh, Prelude, which is sort of like this automatic import in every uh, in every file. Uh, so maybe I, I will extract this uh, setup somewhere else, but um, it is 
something separate to to think about because ideally i wouldn't want to uh, parse and evaluate the file multiple times it, instead it just needs to be uh, once but that definitely requires some thinking and it's not as straightforward as might seem so we look here this context yes yeah, so now the test should actually fail and i want to see that and it does fail we are not able to to look up the function because it doesn't exist in that scope so that's great but if we now put on uh, module scopes that should be better let's try that and it does work great now the question is again let's commit this separately uh, in just a second when we do the same thing here where we uh, do uh, scope make uh, context allocator context scope okay great so commit episode 144 um, create nested scopes for um, import adds modules the prelude is currently imported in the same scope as same scope to provide some nice defaults okay do i want to do anything else well i guess we can either wrap this up right now or we can power through and actually do a bit more interesting work so i will i'll just go ahead and go for it and because we don't want the modules just because we want the modules we want them so that uh, we could actually do um well, use them from the code right that means a few things thing number one we need a syntax for that uh, and i will not think too much too hard about it right now but we need to put it somewhere here so we would say token parse token parse um, import do i want to put it in statements parameter definition statement or syntax definition uh, wait where Token split next statement, parse syntax definition. Okay, let's just put it here for now and then I will figure out where I want to have it. Um, token parse. Uh, okay. Boom. Token parse import statement standard guard standard arguments and now we can figure out what the syntax for this is going to be. Let's start with import. And the big question I guess 
is how is it going to expose uh, the the rest so we want import i think then i would want uh, a string no i don't have strings anymore right um they create automatically values so um we would have a file path and then uh, we need to have So here's what I'm going for. It should look something like import uh, foo as foo. I kind of I kind of like this version. In JavaScript, for example, it's other way around, and it's super annoying because um, you. Um, autocomplete becomes quite problematic, right? Uh, especially in here, if you want to do some destructuring, like you, you say you want only one thing from uh, Foo, which we'll probably later support. I don't know. I just want to uh, get in, uh, I don't know, my function, right, from uh, Foo. Then in order for the complete in the editor to work, you want this in this direction, not the other way around. But anyway. Uh, this is just a side note why it is first the module then the name and not other way around I might support this as thing for other things like sort of um, this direction of assignment but I'll think about it it should be pretty straightforward to add uh, in macros as well uh, but here I'm looking for as and this will be called as keyword and here we'll say import keyword file path as and then I want an identifier mm, this is the name I don't care about the all of it okay so for now I will not do any of the error handling this is quite boring to watch so let's not make it even more boring than this and we just say if we don't have any of those just panic here you want a zero okay um, Actually, it's already returned true, so we'll return true. And we need to, we need to extract stuff from this. So how do we do this? We need to add more things here. If not a file path, descriptor maybe I'll put it separately if a file path descriptor tag is not descriptor tag uh, it's size array or I think I need to maybe have a helper something like each string um, Wait, how do I deal with that in something like external? External, external, external. Ah, okay, so actually I was wrong. It does have a tag. And tag is this. Okay. Good. So we have a string, then we have a keyword, and we have a name, which is an identifier that's all good now we will need to say um, 
basically these two need to have a header so we can call them from up in the file and then token parse import statement okay so for now oh, let's just run this i think basically nothing should change but you never know and also we will now create a mm, sample module here and that sample module will have stuff in it uh, what stuff will it have say full is that seems pretty reasonable and i would i would expect that only well not necessarily actually not necessarily static entries should be exported i also need to figure out what is the uh, syntax for this because um yeah because it's very unclear where to put this uh, i can put it into here i guess that is one option um, then there is an option to um to do it more as a separate statement so i could do something like export uh, the answer right that would be another thing and you can have as many things in here as you want or we can put uh, braces so something like this experts uh, or we could do it with curly braces uh, and then you can rename stuff so yeah there is a bunch of possibilities right now we don't actually track experts so anything in the module will be automatically exported um and that's okay but uh yeah at some point i will need to figure out exactly how the experts are going to look like okay so that is good we now have a sample module and we are ready to write a test the test uh, will probably go into here or maybe oh, let's put it in here modules it should support importing modules we do this and then we would say checker checker you are not doing anything and for now we will return zero but our eventual um eventual target that it returns something from that module Okay, and here we would say uh, import. It's quite annoying, but it's fine. Fixtures uh, slash slash, and then we have sample module as sample module. So this at least shouldn't crash we should uh, we should basically error out on this line because we're returning zero instead of returning uh, what we want to be returning but let's see uh, a few arguments for a call that is because uh, you're supposed to actually return the 32 this void to s32 
let's try this okay yeah we are failing we are failing where i expect us to be to fail so that's all good and now i'm actually going to change it to sample dot the answer and i'm going to use try to use the same dot notation as i do in the objects and the structs i'm not sure that like eventually the module internally might be represented as a struct anyway uh, but at the moment i don't support like um sort of structs that are uh, immediate in the sense that they only exist at the time where we compile and don't uh, spill into runtime and it's also another question right do we, do you want to have modules accessible as a runtime construct um i don't know like all of these are very interesting question and there is also a question about passing values to modules so there is there is a lot of stuff to to think about uh okay anyhow now we should get a crash or an error undefined variable sample this should be sample the module, but it's actually very good. This is exactly what we want to know, right? It just says, I don't know what sample module is because we uh, successfully parsed this expression, but we have not actually created module. We have not assigned it to anything useful. Uh, let's do just that, I guess. Uh, first things first, we need to uh, import a module. And for that, we will steal uh, this stuff here and do it like that. So I will say scope, module scope is scope make context allocator and then context or actually I probably don't need to pass scope here I think um, so that's something to think about now let's add a to do to do to I need a scope argument here I don't know let's see Anyhow, this is like this and like this. Uh, slice literal. Um, I think token string. Um, again, what do we do with external? Because here we actually actually get this. Ah, okay. So it's string slice. Gotcha. Uh, that would be file pass uh, string slice mm, and context and context. Okay, that will test if we at all can. Um, load this, which we probably, uh, we should actually, Let, let's see. Let's just try to run it and see what's going on. Well, we are crashing. That is never a good sign, but we can look at what the problem is. And the problem is that fixed buffer from file is saying that the buffer is null pointer. Uh, fixed buffer as slice. Uh huh. So we were not able to open the file. So, what is the absolute file pass? Fixtures sample. Did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually messed up in here. Um. 
where is my module? No. Oh yeah. This is a string within a string with an escape. Yikes. I probably want to normalize slashes actually. Uh, that's something makes me uh, normalize uh, slashes when importing. I should do that. That is a good thing because it's super awkward. And it's just nicer if you can uh, uh, not think about it when writing for different systems. So. Okay, we still have undefined variable sample module, but we are making progress in the sense that uh, we actually did manage to import uh, that module. And um, since we still have an error, that means that uh, it's, oh, yeah, anyhow. Okay, so we imported this stuff. Now it is time to define something in our code. So I can look at this stuff. And this is roughly what we need to do. The whole lazy thing is also sort of interesting because we might actually want to, uh, to make it in a lazy expression, uh, but I will add it to consider making imports lazy. There is a there's an interesting question there about repeatability and uh, the order of imports. Does it actually matter? Does it matter in any case? So making something lazy would be a challenge by itself. So let's not do it right away. Instead, uh, we will just create a good old value, but uh, that value needs to, you know, point to something. So what are we going to put in here? That is a very interesting question. So let's stay value star, um, module value, and Let's allocate a value. Actually, I think there is a value make context allocator. And then we need to provide a descriptor. So the descriptor is quite interesting. For now, I'll shove a, a void in here. And operand, uh, we will say uh, operand tag is uh, operand tag none. Something along these lines. Ali is not a member of, uh, yeah, so just like this, I guess this. Okay. So now we defined a broken value in there. Uh, we should see a new error because, uh, actually no, uh, name, no, it works out perfectly. We actually do want name source as the name of it. And uh, the question is where it's defined. It is defined in context of, that's also perfect. That's exactly where we uh, want to do it. Maybe we want to use uh, this as a scope, maybe, I don't know, that's fine. Let's see how the compiler reacts to this. It really doesn't like that stuff. Okay, let's try to run it uh, in here. And it says that the scope was a null pointer. Okay, uh, token parse invert statement. Interesting. So I think I don't actually want to use uh, this scope. I should do it like this. 
context scope. Hmm. That's kind of tricky. So the question is where the, do I want to have a global global scope, like something that is actually shared across uh, all the different files. And I think I do uh, for exactly for the case of Prelude, which right now is a bit hacky. Um, so for now, this is fine as it is, uh, but yeah, so uh, to do this should inherit from the global scope. I don't know, that, that actually has, mm, yeah, it will not work like that mm, because we do need to have access to all the operators and if we don't, uh, then none of it will work. Although, although the some of them are hard coded, no, we still need to have uh, to have root scope, and we will say that this is context scope and uh, while root scope parent root scope is root scope parent. And to do it slightly different now, probably want to cache the uh, root scope somewhere. Because this chain can get quite long and it would be quite awkward if we do it every time we need to import. So, but it's not definitely not a problem for right now. Uh, if it will work, that's gonna be all fine. Let's try again. Well, not implemented is better than what we had before. Let's see what exactly is not implemented. And yeah, okay, that makes uh, total sense. Um, we are now trying to get a field out of something that is not at all a struct. Uh, so the error can definitely be improved, but that is a separate uh, topic. So yeah, here, uh, we will need to do a bit more checking. So let's do that. First of all, let's improve the error. Struct get field, struct get field. And here we would say if uh, struct value descriptor type uh, check is um, not descriptor tag uh, struct or rather if it is a struct then do what you did before otherwise we can say left hand side of the dot operator mm must be a struct. So now we should get a better error message out of this. Uh, yeah, needs to be two, two um, equals. Okay, much better. Left hand side must be a struct on line one, 89. Great, uh, I can actually put a slash n in here and then we will get uh, the correct um, position, ideally. So 239 and I'm pretty sure that this is roughly uh, 239. Well, yeah, it will be somewhere here because there is a space here. So 39, yeah, that makes sense. So this is good, it, it even points to the right place. What's next? Well, we need to put something into here. And it's an interesting question what to put in there. 
and I think what I will do is I will create a new um, new descriptor for scopes uh, and that's gonna be it's going to be uh, the same thing as here uh, descriptor scope a pack size of uh, descriptor actually I want a scope star something like that okay now we can get back to our uh, import statement and that import statement we now need to change what we will put into here so the first thing is we're gonna put a scope and second is uh, we are going to uh, create an operand which is tag immediate and then we would have immediate um, Byte size is, uh, well, I guess it's um, size of uh, scope star. And then memory is module scope. So we're just creating a, an APEC value, which in this compiler means that unless you define special uh, operations on that type you can't do anything it's just a collection of bits with nothing that you can really do about that um, and we are gonna stuff uh, module scope in there let's uh, see if that explodes or not it shouldn't and that would mean that we can uh, actually create uh, actually do something nice so now we have something to compare to when we do our uh, dot operator, right? So uh, what we will do is uh, we will go to our get struct struct get field right in here, and we would say else if struct value descriptor is descriptor um, scope then it should be pretty straightforward right uh, we know what to do with scopes we will just uh, say compilation context con uh, module context I need to create a new context here because I need to replace uh, the scope with the one that we will have inside the module uh, maybe do I I actually might not need to um, let me think about that I might need to capture two scopes so I might need to capture a scope in which the module was imported maybe uh, let me scope look up scope look up so yeah that is kind of in interesting I think I actually want scope lookup force uh, but that requires a context and if it requires a context it will uh, uh, 
yeah, let's cr let's create a new context. And module context scope is uh, abstract value. Oh, let's actually do this. So first of all, we need to assert that struct value uh, operand tag is operand tag immediate and then we can say scope star module scope is uh, struct value operand immediate immediate memory okay we have the scope let's uh, also queue the builder and we are ready to rock we will say value star uh, is this what it does well there we are, result value. okay result value is actually provided that is uh, great so i can just uh, steal this from somewhere maybe not whatever scope lookup force module context and then we need to provide a scope also that might seem a bit redundant and we need a name and the name is uh, where is it right hand side source right that's our name uh, wait a second does scope lookup force it returns a value okay that is something i also need to look into okay whatever if it returns a value um uh, we will deal with it i guess i can i can use token lookup force instead because i have the right context right so i can do token Uh, force value um, module context then I need to have a token uh, right hand side and then result value is that how it goes yeah I think that might be a better version of this it will automatically look up the thing in the scope anyway. And it's also universal if we decide to support not just a single idea, but something else. So that's good. Well, I don't know if it's going to work, but I guess we'll find out now. And it does. Cool. So that is basically what I wanted to do. Uh, this is pretty good progress. I'm happy with how this turned out. There is, as you saw, a lot more things to think about, uh, but for now we can put stuff in here and we could import in, in the new module, which is great. It's something that would allow me to slowly start to build up uh, a sort of a bit of a standard library or whatever. Let's see. So if you made it this far, then uh, thank you very much for watching and hopefully See you next time.